Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kurt Roloff, um, CTO of Duality Technologies and also one of the co-founders of the Palisade Open Source Library. Um, this is our inaugural webinar series, inaugural episode of our webinar series uh, focused on Palisade, Homework for Crypto, Lattice Crypto, and applications. Uh, so thank you very much for all, all of you who are attending, all of you who are registered. Uh, this is going to be a fairly regular event and um, basically addressing what we see as uh, some of the more relevant topics in applied homework for crypto, particularly in Palisade, um, going forward. Uh, we plan on having it regularly, fairly monthly, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, as I said, with me today is, is Yuri, my longtime collaborator partner on Palisade. Uh, Yuri, do you want to say a few words of introduction for yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Uh, so I'm a principal scientist with Duality Technologies and also a researcher with New Jersey Institute of Technology. I've been working on Palisade since the very beginning with Kurt, and that was basically from uh, November of 2014. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Yep. No, thank you. Um, so the way we're going to run the talk today is uh, we see this primarily as an intro. Um, we are recording this. Uh, we will be posting it up on YouTube um, and put the slides on the Palisade website later today, notionally tomorrow at the latest. Uh, we have a Q&A session open, so ask us questions as we go. And uh, the way we're structuring this webinar is I'm going to give a high-level introduction to Palisade, uh, both the, in the community, the goals of the project, um, talk about how to get engaged, and uh, Yuri then will take over um, in about a half hour or so, and then talk more specifically about the policy library itself, talk about the, uh, some code samples. And uh, like I said, the goal is primarily introductory. Um, like I said, I'll be high level and Yuri will be going down a uh, uh, slightly more technical and going forward from there. Um, our email address for the Palisade project is, is contact at palisadecrypto.org. And uh, do please feel free to reach out to us at any time as we go. All right, so without further ado, like I said, I'm gonna be focusing on introducing, introducing Palisade. Um, and that's my personal email address at uh, Duality Technologies for anyone who would like to reach out to me personally. So like I said, um, this is the Palisade webinar series. It's the first in a series of webinars with a focus on Lattice Crypto, homomorphic encryption, implementation and support in the Palisade library, and of course, application of these technologies. Um, we do have a mailing list, a Google group. Um, you can join uh, yourself uh, through the email that we advertised this webinar with. Also, you can reach out to us at contact.palisadecrypto.org and we're more than happy to add you to our mailing list or answer any questions you might have. Uh, notionally, our next webinar will be on August 28th. Uh, reach out if you have any future requests for webinar. Um, we have a schedule that we're going to start forming with the webinars. Um, we've had some interest about questions about the security and theory behind Lattice Crypto and homework encryption, and this will notionally be the next webinar, but uh, we reserve the right to update that as we go. And as I said, we're recording and we'll post to YouTube with links and slides on the Palisade website this weekend. Um, in terms of Palisade itself, uh, just to introduce the Palisade project, Palisade is an open source project. It's on the two clause BSD license to basically make it as friendly as possible to, for organizations to use it, including for companies to use it. Uh, the main goals of the project are to provide efficient implementations of Lattice Crypto building blocks and including the leading homomorphic encryption schemes. Uh, we have a number of broad design goals for it, particularly focused on usability uh, to provide simple APIs, uh, to provide modularity uh, for easy mix and match of different Lattice Crypto capabilities, both in terms of uh, for designing and, and testing new Lattice Crypto schemes, but also modularity for application. Um, our objective is to provide cross-platform support. Um, we are primarily a software library, 
but uh, we do provide and have experimented with different embedded backends and hardware design for backends, and particularly the ability to integrate hardware accelerators, uh, which is something that we see as very important for the future also as you move forward. Um, as I said, we are part of a broader community. Uh, one of the most exciting parts for us as we've been uh, developing and fostering Palisade as a library is the growing community that we've been able to build around the library. Um, we've had a big announcement about a year ago where we became a fiscally sponsored project of NumFocus, meaning we're part of the NumFocus uh, consortium of open source libraries. Um, for those of you who don't know, NumFocus um, is a 501c3, meaning a nonprofit organization here in the U.S that fosters various open source libraries for data science, things like NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, ConduForge, and so on, uh, that promotes open practices in, in research data and scientific computing. And uh, we, we feel that Palisade has been a good fit for NumFocus. We've been very happy there uh, with aligned objectives to promote innovation via open source software. Um, and as part of that uh, engagement with NumFocus, um, as a project, we take community growth and engagement very seriously, uh, meaning Palisade is available for all on as a permissive license as possible. And we've also been very serious about adopting a governance structure and code of conduct that we feel fits best practices for open source software. Uh, we particularly adopted the NumFocus best practices for, for their, their governance and code of conduct. And we do take this code of conduct very seriously. Um, as I said, NumPoke has been a great fit for us. Uh, although the primary fiscal sponsorship uh, for Palisade has come from other sources, uh, NumPoke does support the ability to make direct donations, both to NumPoke as a community and to Palisade in particular. So uh, if you have a couple spare Bitcoin rattling around, feel free to uh, reach out to NumFocus who can get you uh, set up um, with uh, fiscal sponsorship of Palisade also. Um, moving forward, as I say, we do get our primary, primary fiscal support uh, through external sponsors. Uh, DARPA has been a, a very, very good sponsor of us over many years. Uh, Palisade grew, up, grew out of the um, uh, ecosystem of Proceed, Safeware, uh, YFA and now CSL, um, and so we're, we we can't thank DARPA enough for the very generous support that we received from them. Uh, also, we've been heavily engaged with with NIH, which has also been very good sponsors. Uh, IARPA, particularly for the ramparts and Hector, uh, we've also been very fortunate to have very very uh, uh, generous sponsorship from um, major foundations, uh, particularly Sloan Foundation and Simons. And then also corporate support, support also coming from uh, Duality, an organization formerly known as LGS Innovations, now, now known as CACI, with also uh, university contributions of, of staff support, particularly MIT, WPI, and Sabanja uh, University. And uh, of course, NSF has supported a number of the universities that have gone into the university contributions. Um, in terms of the user community, uh, we, we we developed Palisade to be used, and we are very solicitous of any feedback we get from our user community. Uh, particularly, we've gotten, and at least anecdotally, uptake inside the uh, DOD and, and defense industry, uh, financial services, uh, healthcare, and then also academia, academia for re supporting of research and supporting privacy-preserving research um, and privacy-preserving data analytics and then also civil government. Uh, we do encourage uh, folks to reach out to us and we do have a lot of healthy conversation uh, from our user community as we go and to please feel free to reach out. Um, and we've had an extensive uh, contributor community which we do have a long list on our Palisade website which I'll mention on briefly, uh, particularly coming from Duality, NJIT, MIT, UCSD, uh, Leuven, 26 Labs, Raytheon, CACI, and so forth. And as I said, I, I do want to beat this drum about how we are always welcoming of new community members. Um, to get a little bit more technical, 
particularly about Palisade and Palisade support. Um, Palisade at its heart is an open source library for lattice-based crypto, lattice-based encryption. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, lattice teams are, are somewhat new family of encryption uh, built on lattice mathematics, uh, effectively manipulations of, of integer vectors, if you're an engineer like I am, um, is broadly known to be resistant to quantum computing attacks, uh, which has been driven uh, uh, some fair bit of uptake. Um, there have not been many traditionally lattice schemes that have been implemented publicly, but that's starting to change. And this also gets at the uh, general Palisade goal of supporting a general lattice crypto, so to speak, open source toolbox. Um, we see also Palisade as an investment in implementation to transition the advanced schemes into widespread production use. Uh, so an ability to both prototype um, uh, new schemes and also to develop uh, trans transition artifacts that can be used for later use, um, as was done, for example, with RSA, elliptic curve, and uh, so forth. Although, like I said, Palisade does focus on lattice crypto. Um, we have a number of lattice capabilities supported in Palisade. Uh, Erie is going to be diving down into some uh, code samples and, and so forth going on from there. Um, at its heart, everything is uh, public key crypto, PKE. We also make extensive use of proxy encryption. And then we do have uh, uh, some further out lattice-based trapdoor schemes, including uh, identity-based encryption and variations of attribute-based encryption based on lattice crypto. Um, we're probably most famous for our support of various homomorphic encryption protocols, both somewhat homomorphic and fully homomorphic. And we have general support, for example, for BGV, CKKS, BFV, uh, FU, FHEW, and historic support for some older schemes also. Um, we also have a few other functionalities in pre-release, but please do reach out if you have future requests, uh, bug reports, anything else like that. Uh, we do engage uh, as much as possible with our community and try to be inclusive with what we're doing. Um, as I said, we are post-quantum. And uh, we're going to have a future webinar on lattice crypto security. In terms of the computational primitives being used in um, uh, Palisade that we use to support lattice crypto, um, at its heart, it's basically a large number of linear transforms and noise generation. Um, you know, if you think about the larger aspects of what is a lattice crypto library, Lattice crypto libraries effectively are linear transforms and, and, and uh, noise generators, noise manipulators um, over, over ve vectors. And I say this with someone with a background in signal processing, not someone with a background in um, uh, hard crypto, uh, crypto, cryptography or cryptanalysis. So as an engineering perspective, this is uh, how we've generally structured Lattice crypto as support for linear transforms. Um, and just as a brief, brief uh, placeholder for fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, it was discovered in 2009 by, by Craig Dredtree at Stanford IBM. Um, I personally consider it to be the most important CS breakthrough of the 21st century, but then again, I'm, I'm probably very biased. Um, it is a very, very different compute model. Um, and we see that as Palisade is exposing the compute model for evaluation functions that sit on top of Palisade. Um, a lot of people ask about performance and, and you know the early schemes were very revolutionary but there have been tremendous theoretical improvements since then and there is an extensive list of publications uh, that have been driving this uh, on the Palisade website. Uh, we like to think that Palisade we're leveraging trying to leverage the best in theory with the best in implementations and I say that in quotation marks because I know there's a lot of very other high quality work being done both in theory and in implementation and uh, we're, we're very happy with the broader community, particularly on homework for encryption and, and the homework for encryption community uh, going forward. And uh, there is a very, very active both research and engineering component to homework for crypto in a broader ecosystem, which we um, are very happy to engage in also. Um, some of the broader design considerations that drove our design to Palisade, uh, came out with our early experiences in the DARPA Proceed program and the preceding library called Cypher. Um, our design considerations were driven by this perceived tension between crypto application specific configurations 
uh, versus generic math library configurations and, and how to split the difference between the two. And particularly for crypto specific, about how one selects schemes, how one selects parameters, and, and one puts together a, um, a building blocks into a broader set of capability, also driven by lower level systems interactions configurations about how one manages memory, how one manages the lower level op operations, you know, for example, single CRT or double CRT, and that also plays around with different levels of parallelism, whether it's in the math layer, the lattice layer, or, or circuit execution. And, and Yuri's going to be expanding upon this, but uh, we see the uh, uh, Palace open source library as being at, operating at multiple levels, where at its lowest level, we, we do provide a primitive set of math layers that um, are, are in software. We also provide hooks for, for hardware acceleration, whether FPGA, GPU, or, or ASIC type designs. Uh, particularly support for modular arithmetic operations, number transforms, discrete Gaussian sampling, and of course, higher level operations for general cyclotomics and, and so forth. And then support for lattice crypto primitives on top, such as public key encryption, proxy encryption, homomorphic encryption, and then higher level support for encoding and application layers. And, and so this is basically Palisade in a nutshell. And uh, we see this as basically something that, Pal that uh, Yuri is gonna be uh, talking to in a little bit also. Um, and we do see Palisade as fitting into an encrypted computing uh, ecosystem, supporting for uh, research and, and development and production use of applications um, as a platform for software engineering, research engineering, a platform usability of uh, Lattice Crypto and Homework Crypto, a platform for exploration of various schemes, uh, various configurations. Uh, one thing we support very seriously in the Palisade community and Palisade project is support for emerging standards as represented in the homomorphic encryption.org uh, draft standards that we've been engaging with uh, more broadly, uh, particularly through, through Microsoft, through Intel, through Samsung, through Duality, uh, and IBM and, and other you know, valued collaborators in that space. And then, of course, also engagement for computer engineering and, and hardware acceleration of Lattice Crypto. Um, you know, in terms of computing on encrypted data, just as a snapshot, you know, as I said before, there's a concept of, of messages that are brought in that are in, then encoded into plain text, that are then encrypted into ciphertext, that are then computed on. Uh, after the computing is done, that the data is resulting is decrypted, then decoded and passed back to messages. And uh, you know, each layer of these hierarchies, the usable hierarchies, are, are supported by Palisade, um, including encodings, uh, various encryption decryption schemes, and then various evaluation schemes that uh, support eval add, eval mult, eval rotate, and a few other uh, evaluation operations in the homework for crypto side. And Yuri will be talking at this at a high level, and we'll have future uh, talks in this webinar series that dive down deeper into that. Um, and also, as I said, we, we do focus a lot on hardware acceleration, uh, particularly support for hardware coprocessors. Uh, there are a number of papers on the Palisade website that look at subroutine calls, for example, the GPU FPGA accelerators. Uh, some of the early work that got us into that and drove a lot of our thinking on that is the early work from Darpa Proceed that uh, designed a Vertex 7 FPGA uh, coprocessor. Um, which is also, uh, I think several people on the talk are familiar with that also. Um, in terms of engagement with the community, um, I would particularly recommend the uh, Palisade Crypto website. Um, everything on the, uh, um, the next slide is supported in, the, is listed on the Palisade website, uh, along with links to publications. Um, in fact, let me actually just bring up the Palisade website just to kind of go through it very quickly. Which you can see right here, uh, Palisade homepage. Uh, we provide links to go and download the latest version of Palisade, both the official, the current official version, uh, links to the uh, wiki, and of course the advanced version, which is currently version 1.10.2. Um, we tend to keep both an official release and an advanced release uh, of Palisade available for download um, along with documentation uh, to support that and links to the documentation and Yuri's going to be touching on this. Uh, we like to give credit where credit is due for folks that both use and contribute to Palisade. 
Uh, we also try to keep extensive lists of people that have written papers that have touched on Pal Palisade, both in terms of applications, uh, homomorphic encryption, um, prototyping, hardware acceleration, uh, proxy encryption, very good advanced schemes like IBE, ABE, and obfuscation, uh, lattice sampling, and so forth. Um, we will be providing links to the webinar on our webinar subpage. And like I said, our code of conduct is quite important to us, and, and this is our general pledge for that, along with future uh, information about how to reach out to people in the community uh, for Palisade. Uh, going back to the slides, like I said, we do have a Google group that we maintain for announcements of Palisade, and I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, if you do want to be added manually, do please reach out to us on the contact mailing list for Palisade. Um, and as I said, here are links to the Palisade manual and the official GitLab repos of both the official and the development release of Palisade. So thank you very much. Um, that's my part of the high level introduction to Palisade and the Palisade project. Um, I'm gonna kick it over to Yuri. Um, I haven't seen any questions come in, but if there are any, please do reach out to us as we go. And uh, Pal Yuri, you're, you're, I'll stop sharing so you can, sh you can share. And then uh, you could take it over and go and have a deeper dive of code samples and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen, just one second. See, I see a question coming in on the chat privately while you're, you're getting set up, okay. asking about uh, you know regular meetings and things like that. Uh, we do have a regular development meetings for core developers basically every Friday, every Friday morning actually. Um, and we do um, engage with the Homer for Crypto organization. So we are out and about in the community. Of course, now with the pandemic that things are a little bit different with travel. So we've gone highly virtual with our organization. All right, Yuri, ready to go? Yeah, almost just a sec, just uh, okay. configuring the screens. One second. Um, okay, so look, I just want to confirm that this is the right screen. Um, Kurt, could you confirm this is the right screen? Yep, looks great, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Kurt. So uh, this uh, presentation will be a little bit more uh, technical. Uh, so we'll go over the architecture capabilities uh, of Palisade. Uh, We'll talk about some uh, homomorphic encryption schemes that are included, uh, and we'll uh, walk through uh, the key documentation that is useful, especially uh, for uh, beginners. Okay. So uh, from the very beginning, Palisade uh, has been designed uh, with the mind of uh, providing a framework uh, for different uh, homomorphic encryption schemes, or lattice cryptography schemes. And uh, uh, from the very beginning, we thought that it would be useful uh, to have all those schemes supported, to have uh, different, uh, to also have the abilities to use different lattice representations, for example, different types of polynomials, uh, to use different uh, so-called mathematical backends uh, that uh, represent how we perform modular arithmetic. Uh, and uh, the idea that, I mean, all, everyone understands that in lattice cryptography, efficiency performance is very important, but uh, one of the goals that we set for ourselves is can we modularize it? Can we push it uh, to essentially lower uh, layers so that uh, the, any improvements in the scheme itself are independent of uh, uh, improvements in the, uh, let's say, modular arithmetic operations? And something that we also, considered is this library is for people to use. So it's, it's not uh, just uh, some uh, research prototype library. It's a library that we want to be, uh, make as easy to use as possible, especially uh, uh, for application developers or for engineers working in other areas. So one of the goals and from the very beginning from 1.0 was uh, to have an API that is scheme agnostic, at least for most common schemes. Uh, and uh, coupled with that, we've been trying to follow uh, best software engineering uh, uh, practices as well. 
Uh, so in other words, so we tried, uh, we're trying to use a standard, uh, uh, basically, uh, for, for example, coding style and standard design patterns. And we've uh, uh, almost since the very beginning, we've uh, been using uh, Google uh, unit test framework, Google benchmarking framework, uh, and we've been uh, uh, posting documentation using, for example, Doxygen and uh, writing our own manual. So these uh, were original goals, initial goals, and uh, they're still very important. They're still very relevant. Of course, we're improving uh, in all these aspects uh, over time. So Kurt uh, previously showed this uh, multi-layered structure that we use in Palisade. And the high level idea is we wanna be able to swap certain component, let's say, for, let's say of a math layer, or let's say of a uh, lattice operations layer, and still have the same uh, crypto uh, capabilities uh, available to us. Um, and, uh, uh, and this may be just going over a little bit the layers themselves. So at the very, uh, uh, the lowest uh, level, we have the primitive math layer, which has, which is where we do a lot of optimizations related to number theoretic transform or some modular arithmetic operations. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, uh, that math layer in the next slide as well. Then we go up to the lattice operations layer, which essentially works with certain types of polynomials uh, that are very efficient and that uh, allow us uh, to uh, 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 basically satisfy uh, uh, ring learning with errors uh, and a lot of different options uh, for different types of uh, polynomials and different representation for, the, for those polynomials is available in this lattice operations layer. And then of course, the most interesting layer from the uh, crypto perspective is the crypto layer, where all our schemes such as uh, leave such as homomorphic encryption, proxy encryption, digital signature, or uh, uh, IBE identity-based encryption schemes, and then the other two layers. I mean, kind of they're intermixed. So they're, we put them at the same level because it's very hard to use an ordered uh, basically approach. Here it, are the encoding layer. So how do we represent the data? Uh, that's a very important problem for homomorphic encryption, and it, uh, this uh, any type of capability here interacts with the crypto layer, and also the application layer. And typically, the application layer is not something that's part of the library itself. The library provides an API that can be used to write applications. Uh, so, uh, um, but we do provide some uh, basic examples as well. So, something related to mathematical backends because. Uh, as Kurt mentioned, uh, uh, we understood from the very beginning that by switching certain, uh, uh, for example, uh, options, whether it's hardware acceleration, whether it's using native arithmetic, whether it's using uh, 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 some kind of mu different multi-precision uh, uh, capability, multi-precision integer capability, that different uh, ways of performing uh, modular vector and integer arithmetic would be needed. And it, currently, we provide such support, for instance, for multi-precision math, mathematical backends. Uh, and there are three uh, backends available for operations that work with large numbers. And uh, the, one of them is fixed size array of native integers, which is the default representation that we use. The other one is dynamic size array of native integers. It's slightly slower, but uh, it provides more flexibility. It doesn't have any constraints on the uh, largest uh, uh, integers we can deal with. And then we also have a backend based on um, NTL and JMP. So that's, uh, it's optional, it, uh, NTL and OMP, I mean, NTL and JMP is optional, but uh, we do provide the capability for someone to leverage an existing efficient multi-precision backend. And also uh, on top of that, for the, what we call native integer backends, so the backends that deal with machine uh, word um, level operations, we provide different options depending on the architecture. For instance, uh, uh, the, I mean, a lot of the uh, machines or architectures that we work with now are 64-bit integer, I mean, are based on 64-bit uh, 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 bit, uh, width. Uh, but some uh, compilers or some architecture may su uh, support or not support 128-bit Arithmetic. So we both options are available, and by default we choose uh, the option with both 64-bit 
integers and 128 bits uh, in, uh, integers used for double word operations, for example, multiplication, because that it gives the best performance. And then we also, uh, for some very specialized embedded systems, uh, uh, we provide support for 32-bit um, integer backends and more options will uh, be added to this and we're experimenting with a couple of other options for native integer backends. Uh, so now we're going to move to the specifications of um, Palisade, just trying to uh, explain what it is, what this library is, what the uh, compilers are supported, what operating systems are supported. So the Palisade library is a multi-threaded library written in C++11. And a multi-threading in our case is achieved using OMP. And the operating systems that are uh, supported by Palisade uh, now are essentially Linux, Unix, um, uh, Windows uh, with, uh, that is based on MinJW, uh, using the MinJW um, configuration, and Mac OS, essentially the three major OSs, and uh, this is why Kurt mentioned previously, it's a cr cross-platform library. The compilers that we support are uh, either GCC or G++, 6.1 and later, or Clang or LLVM uh, version 6 and later. So the two common compilers that we focus on. There's some other compilers are also supported in the experimental mode, but uh, uh, we find that uh, uh, one of these two compilers can in most situations can uh, be used on almost any system. And uh, for building Palisade, uh, to, uh, we use CMake. So CM and uh, we provide a lot of configuration flags to customize the build of uh, Palisade. There is a CMake uh, package for Palisade uh, that is now used. And uh, as Kurt already mentioned, uh, a Palisade is distributed under the BSD to close license. Uh, the default install of Palisade uh, as of version 1.10 has no external dependencies. So if you run the uh, build with no special flags, no external dependencies will be used. Everything is included in uh, the Palisade. Uh, I mean, any code that basically gets built is included uh, in the Palisade folder. Um, however, we do provide uh, uh, support for uh, external uh, libraries if needed. For instance, if a, a user wants to uh, use a NTL GMP multi-precision math backend for certain operations that uh, uh, involve large inter arithmetic, uh, they can um, turn on that option. And then if, if there is a need for optimized multi-threaded block allocation, then TCMalloc, which is part of uh, Google performance tools now, can also be turned on, but these are optional. So in terms of the availability, so all C++ versions of Palisade are uh, pub published uh, and available through GitLab. So we use the uh, GitLab uh, environment um, for all repositories. And uh, the most important uh, repo uh, or the most important version of Palisade uh, for well, essentially production use or for any type of uh, evaluation uh, for production use is uh, what we call the Palisade stable release. And it lives in this, uh, uh, basically at the link, uh, the last part of it is Palisade-release. And uh, this particular uh, repository includes the latest uh, stable version of Palisade. Uh, so which is 1.9.2 at this time. And, and uh, their releases, their all prior releases published there as well, started with 1.0, uh, just for historical purposes. Uh, in addition to that, as a, uh, we use somewhat standard practice of uh, open source project, we also provide uh, a preview uh, release repo. So where we uh, uh, push some new functionality that hasn't been fully tested, that, this, that still may have bugs. Uh, and uh, we push out those preview releases for the community to, to test and then uh, eventually, once all bugs uh, that are identified have been fixed, uh, we convert uh, a release, uh, uh, a certain development release, to a stable release. And currently, the latest development version or preview uh, version of Palisade is 1.10.2. Um, and uh, maybe something to also note, uh, 
well, in the master branch of the uh, development repo, we also include some other capabilities that do not make it to the release, uh, to the actual releases, um, because we don't think, for instance, they're uh, mature enough to be uh, used in uh, production. And uh, I'll, I'll talk briefly about what uh, some of those capabilities are, but the, maybe the uh, bottom line uh, from the, uh, for this Palisade preview slash development release repo is that you can go to a specific release and get the, uh, a preview version of that release, or you can go to the master branch and get some additional functionality that's experimental or uh, some code that's in, in development. In other words, when we're working uh, on the next uh, preview version of uh, Palisade. So there is another uh, repo that uh, uh, is, I would say, official, where we provide an example of how Palisade can be used in Python. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in that particular case, uh, we have a linear um, uh, SVM inference example written in Python uh, that it uses a lightweight uh, wrapper uh, around Palisade. Uh, Something else to also note, uh, there is a FreeBSD port uh, that's essentially a Palisade package for FreeBSD users uh, that's available. So if for FreeBSD users, they can install Palisade using one or two lines. Um, and these four, um, I would say, ports or options for downloading Palisade are either official, like the first three, or uh, uh, the ones that we interact actively, like the free GSD port. Uh, we're aware that there are some other uh, ports of Palisade available uh, in, uh, on the internet, uh, but uh, I mean, th th those ports may, uh, could be quite functional, could be quite interesting, uh, but I would like to note that uh, they are not officially supported by the Palisade team, just uh, from the perspective of you know, potential issues. So, uh, the, so I'm going to move to current capabilities. Kurt, are there any questions uh, uh, that uh, need to be answered uh, at this point? Yeah, there were there were two questions that um, I think would be good to ask. And I think it's actually the perfect time to do it. Uh, there is a question from uh, a gentleman who asked, "What do we ter support in terms of, of architectures such as x86 ARM and so forth?" And um, well, I, I know we, we definitely support x86 and ARM and it, it, with a few other niche embedded architectures. Um, you know, it, we wrote the library to be as deployable, as adaptable as possible. And, uh, you know, we haven't had really any, any issues deploying on other, other architectures, uh, but we're very happy to get questions about that in particular. Uh, there was a second question. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Yuri. Uh, no, I, I think that's pretty good. So we do, I mean, we've, we've experimented with this and uh, uh, some of these capabilities might be experimental. Some of them are more uh, basically, uh, uh, I would say stable, uh, but uh, yeah, I completely agree with you that uh, uh, it's, it's something that we've been uh, 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 basically putting a lot of attention on that. Uh, I, I see a couple of questions, maybe just very briefly, I'll, I'll uh, res let me see. Uh, the, the first one, is there a roadmap for Android version? Uh, it's a very good question. We have an experimental version for Android. Uh, we have not made it publicly available yet, just uh, uh, because of the you know, maturity of that uh, solution. But uh, that's certainly something that uh, we're uh, considering very seriously. Yeah, I'll, I'll even say this a little bit more strongly, Yuri, is that we, we ha do have it working in prototype. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on in Palisade. And if there are particular Android experts that would like to help with that and make it hard, make it harder as in hard crypto hardening or uh, uh, better and, and help us engage with the Android community, we would be very solicitous of people who would like to engage with us on that. Um, okay, so yep. that's, that's, I think that's a good question. Uh, uh, maybe there is another question, but I think it's more in depth, I'd rather, uh, answer that one after, I mean, after we're done with the main uh, part of the yeah. talk. Okay, I'm going to continue with the, um, with the talk. So current capabilities. So now we're going to talk about what schemes uh, Palisade currently supports. And of course, the uh, main focus of Palisade, although it's a general latest uh, crypto library, uh, is fully homomorphic encryption. I mean, in some cases, it's uh, somewhat homomorphic encryption. In some cases, it's fully homomorphic encryption. But uh, the schemes are that uh, 
we support all have bootstrapping, I mean, all have bootstrap capabilities. So in the traditional sense, they're F FHE schemes. And uh, maybe the first note that I would like to make is that all FHE schemes that are implemented in Palisade use the parameters that are suggested in the homomorphic encryption.org security standard. It's very important for us uh, to stay compliant with the standard. It's a big initiative uh, uh, by the community and uh, Kurt uh, briefly mentioned it during uh, his talk. And uh, essentially the flavors of schemes that are supported is there are five common schemes, homomorphic encryption schemes that uh, everyone who's touched um, um, homomorphic encryption has heard of. I mean, and, and homomorphic encryption in the sense of doing something, uh, I would say, uh, doing some deep computations, doing something that's uh, related to FHE. So uh, one of such schemes is the Brokersky Fender countering scheme uh, that we've been supporting of, of for a couple of years uh, that's used for integer arithmetic. Another uh, scheme is Brokersky Gentry like Antonathan, uh, so-called BGV scheme that uh, is also used for integer arithmetic. So it's basically both BFV and BGV are used for integer arithmetic computations. And there are some uh, benefits, pros and cons of using one versus the other for certain types of computations. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about BGV, but we've recently pushed some uh, uh, advances in, I mean, we've, we've sig significantly improved our BGV implementation, especially in 110. Then uh, uh, a very popular scheme, uh, probably the most popular scheme at this time is uh, Cheon Kim Kim Song, uh, CKKS scheme uh, that is used for real number arithmetic and you know, complex number arithmetic. It, in practice, we mostly see real number arithmetic cases. Um, uh, and uh, the two schemes that uh, are per allow performing Boolean circuit evaluation are, uh, that allow to do full FHE and uh, execute any Boolean uh, circuit, any arbitrary circuit. Um, um, and uh, the two approaches are few, by, that was proposed uh, earlier uh, by Yukai and Michancho, uh, and then the TFHE scheme. So both of those schemes uh, uh, are available in Palisade. So effectively, this is the Boolean circuit evaluation. These three uh, types of computations that homomorphic encryption currently supports, integer arithmetic, real number arithmetic, and Boolean circuit evaluation are fully represented in Palisade. Uh, there is another scheme that we support for somewhat historical purposes, the Staley Steinfeld scheme. Uh, I, I put it as for limited injury, limited integer arithmetic. So uh, the scheme itself is not as good uh, for practical reasons as the, for instance, BFP and BGV, but it's based on the entry problem uh, and uh, we wanted to keep uh, an option available that is based on the entry problem uh, because everything else is based on the learning with errors. Uh, also, we support multi-party extensions of FHE. So, uh, uh, so in scenarios, uh, like the classical um, FHE scenario is to use this uh, single key. Uh, we do provide two uh, mechanisms, two different mechanisms. Some, sometimes they can be complemented uh, to extend this to a multi-party setting. Uh, and in particular, the threshold FHE is supported for BGV, BFB, and CKKS schemes and uh, proxy encryption is supported for the same schemes. Uh, in addition to, uh, to, I would say, FHE-based schemes, uh, we also have uh, an efficient lattice trapdoor toolkit uh, that includes lattice trapdoor sampling and various ways to do, for example, sub-Gaussian sampling. And uh, in certain applications that uh, uh, benefit from that. Uh, certain, uh, uh, rel I mean, some of them are simpler, some of them more advanced applications. And in particular, in the release versions, we include di digital signatures, uh, we include identity-based encryption, and we include ciphertext policy attributes-based encryption. So uh, we include those in the release version because we feel they're much more, they're relatively mature to be used uh, uh, in applications. Then in addition to that, uh, we have experimental, uh, I would call them research capabilities, where we have different flavors of program obfuscation. So uh, the essentially prototypes that were developed as part of the DARPA Safeware program. And we have, uh, uh, if, uh, in my opinion, the most efficient available 
implementation of key policy attribute based encryption, which is a powerful uh, construction that can be used, uh, for instance, uh, as a building block for functional encryption and uh, by itself uh, is quite useful too. Uh, and these experimental research capabilities uh, do not get included in the actual releases, preview or stable releases, but we keep them in the master branch of the Palisade development repo. Uh, so of course, FHE is very, uh, uh, I mean, it, it, although we support various schemes, but the FHE in particular is something uh, that we put a lot of effort into. And I would like to provide more details on uh, uh, how we support the uh, three core um, uh, FHE schemes that, are, that use packing. And all three schemes, BGV, BFE, and CKKS, implemented in uh, Palisade are used in so-called full RNS design or double CRT design for efficiency. So uh, RNS means residue number uh, uh, system. And uh, uh, the idea is that you can break down large integers into a bunch of small ones, uh, machine word size integers, and then perform operations much more efficiently. And in this case, also the runtime of uh, uh, operations uh, uh, scales almost linearly as, as, for instance, we increase the size of uh, integers. So it's, a, it's, a, it's the most efficient way to perform operations right now. And uh, we made sure that all three schemes are uh, implemented in full RNS, that we don't go to the multi-precision, slow multi-precision arithmetic for this. Um, and we also support for these schemes uh, all known key switching methods. Uh, and including uh, the classical digit decomposition approach uh, 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 proposed uh, by Berkersky and Wakeman and Nathan, and then uh, uh, also formulated for, for in the RNS form in a later paper, uh, we support this key switching mechanism. Uh, and then we uh, support the so-called hybrid approach, which uses an auxiliary um, RNS basis. Um, along with two special cases of uh, the hybrid uh, key switching technique. So one of them is, we call this JHS, based on uh, the original HLEAP uh, uh, paper uh, focusing on the AS circuit evaluation. So we, we, that's where this uh, approach was proposed, as well, uh, along with a special case where a small auxiliary modules is used, like the way it's implemented in, in SEAL. Um, Another very important uh, requirement for uh, the for all the implementations that we do in uh, Palisade for FHE is to make them as usable as possible. So on top of the efficiency and using the full RNS, we try to uh, make them as usable as possible. And uh, in particular, uh, uh, this can be observed right now, especially for um, users who are more familiar with uh, the challenges of uh, FHE. What we do right now is we try to hide uh, and automate maintenance operations such as rescaling in CKKS and modular switching in BGV. Uh, and all those are done automatically by Palisade. Uh, the user does not have to type at any point the word like method rescale or, or, or something like a mod switch method. Uh, all those decisions that uh, basically are uh, made by Palisade. Uh, the other uh, consideration, important consideration, is that uh, uh, we want uh, to use same size small primes in the, in the RNS constructions uh, for all schemes. And uh, it just makes, uh, 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 makes it much easier to uh, work with a scheme. And for instance, we did that in the recent uh, implementation of BGV uh, in Palisade 110. And, uh, uh, our claim is that uh, the BGV implementation uh, in Palisade 110 is as easy to use as BFE. So uh, the API is essentially um, um, the same for BFE and BGV on all calls are exactly the same as we will see later. Uh, then another important aspect is uh, related uh, to how we deal with the dynamic noise estimation. So typically that is a challenge, for instance, for BGV. Uh, Currently, the way we're uh, supporting uh, these three schemes in Palisade, and we're going to continue improving in this direction, is that all parameters are determined before the computation, and we do not need to do any type of dynamic noise estimations as the computation progresses. So all those three things 
uh, help with the usability. In other words, we're hiding complex decisions that have to be made and uh, Palisade is automatically making those decisions. And uh, maybe just one side note is CKKS and RNS is designed to minimize the approximation error. That's something that we're also targeting in, in on top of simpler API. We're also trying to uh, make the approximation error as small as possible so that uh, it's not an issue from the usability perspective. Uh, so some of, some of the ideas that I just mentioned, or at least uh, uh, some of the underlying uh, uh, ideas are uh, still haven't been published and, and uh, select the ideas were presented in, in our Simons Institute latest workshop talk uh, uh, in May. Uh, but uh, we are also writing it, uh, up those ideas, let's say for BGV and CKKS in a more formal way uh, and planning to uh, post um, some uh, papers in ePrint in August, September. So more details uh, on uh, this variance, RMS variance that we're developing will be posted um, soon. So uh, something that we also I would like to note is that the few and TFHE implementations that are included in Palisade are uh, HE standard compliant. So this has been an issue uh, for both of them previously. Uh, and the standard compliance in, in concretely, it means just they use uniform ternary secrets. Uh, that's the, the simplest way to say it. And uh, also just maybe a couple of notes on the comparison of few and TFHE. So the uh, runtime for ternary secret case, which is the standard compliant case, the most efficient standard compliant case is roughly the same based on our recent work. Yeah, the, the main uh, difference between few and TFHE is that for ternary secrets, the bootstrapping key size is smaller for TFHE. And the key difference between few and TFHE is just the bootstrapping procedure that's used. Everything else uses the same uh, constructions, uh, the same approach. Uh, and maybe just this is a side note. Uh, so for the case of 128-bit uh, security setting, it's HE standard compliant. Uh, Current, the current runtime uh, on a commodity workstation, just in a regular Intel workstation, without using AVX extensions, which so just using the generic um, uh, uh, implementation without AVX extensions, is about 90 milliseconds. So this is just the uh, time to, to. So this is the bootstrapping time, and this is the uh, boolean circuit evaluation time. Just an, an interesting uh, metric that uh, will certainly continue improving on. Uh, and more details on uh, the uh, support of few and TFHE in Palisade is uh, presented at basically the, 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 uh, in the joint paper with Daniele, uh, that the link is provided here. So uh, in terms of uh, the functionality, uh, Palisade provides the most complete um, uh, support for various FHE schemes or extensions, multi-party uh, uh, multi extensions of FHE that uh, we're aware of and that the community is aware of. So it's, it's, it's one of, it, maybe it's again, one of the original goals of Palisade in which uh, uh, we're still trying to meet and it's still our main goal is to make sure that we provide complete support of uh, various tools that uh, homomorphic encryption research uh, uh, has is, uh, uh, formed over these years. And uh, I, I use different colors for this particular um, functionality comparison matrix just to highlight that, for instance, uh, uh, so this is the integer arithmetic, this is the real number arithmetic, this is the uh, Boolean circuit evaluation, and uh, this and uh, this section is deals with mul uh, multi-party extensions. So the idea is we're trying to give the full set of capabilities so that uh, the users can choose which scheme makes more sense. Um, and uh, maybe that's that's a uh, very important consideration for us. And, and we can see that the, from that perspective, uh, Palisade uh, has ev every fu functionality in terms of schemes available that any other library does. Uh, so uh, maybe it's, so I would like to briefly describe uh, the directory structure. So we're moving more to the documentation uh, section of uh, this talk. Um, and uh, probably just a couple of comments. So we use the standard uh, structure for folder uh, structure for uh, 
open source projects. Uh, we have the main folders SRC, the, where the library source code resides. Um, and that folder is broken down in include with header files, uh, interleave with the source files, and then uh, we provide unit test examples and, and some further examples. So this is, so the library itself, the main code of the library lives here in the SRC folder. And, and I'll go over it just briefly a little bit later. Um, uh, and then of course we have some other uh, directories. There is a benchmark directory that has all the benchmarks that one can run uh, using the Google benchmark, uh, Google, uh, benchmark framework against Palisade. There is a, a certain directory used for building Palisade. So we typically suggest using the word, I mean, name build, but it can be anything. So this is where the binaries live. And you know, once you install Palisade, that's, that's uh, where you work. Then there is a doc folder, which has the documentation, such as uh, the user's guide um, for Palisade. There is a third party directory. So that either includes Git sub modules uh, that get integrated in Palisade as part of the install or uh, in the situations when external dependencies are used, such as NTL and GMP, uh, the uh, uh, basically a code for those libraries. And then there is a test folder that houses uh, uh, things related to the uh, Google uh, test framework. And, uh, and one more, uh, one more, um, architectural point that I would like to make is that we try to uh, separate different functionalities into so-called modules, which are directories effectively. So there is a core uh, directory that has the math and lattice uh, construction. So it's separated out from the, any crypto constructions. Then for instance, there is a BNFHE module specifically for Boolean circuit evaluation. Uh, we, we found it useful to sep separate it out from other schemes and because uh, uh, also in many situations you can do operation, uh, Boolean up circuit op operations using small moduli less than 32 bits, which is important for certain uh, um, embedded systems, for instance. And then we have the different, uh, other different modules that are specific to the uh, crypto capabilities. So for instance, uh, AB uh, for uh, identity-based encryption and for ciphertext policy um, attribute-based encryption. And then we have PKE, everything related to FHE, uh, just uh, PKE itself, or even symmetric encryption is actually also here. Uh, but everything that's related to FHE lives here. And for each scheme, we have specific uh, folders. And you can see that we have, for instance, three variants of PFD, we have two variants of BGV and uh, some, we have a null scheme that's also an alternative to experiment uh, with a, a functionality uh, that's um, uh, in BGV or BFE uh, without any encryption. And then we also have the signature module uh, that uh, uh, houses the, our uh, GPU based digital signature um, in this case. So, uh, the next part, uh, so the next part, I'm going to go over the documentation. And uh, uh, Kurt, are there any questions that uh, I should um, answer at this point before we start uh, looking into different? Yeah, there's maybe one or two. Uh, there's um, one question about, um, I'll read it to you, in the scheme in which real numbers are supported, uh, which mathematical operations are supported in a homomorphic manner? Um, I think the high level answer is that we're standing, supporting the standard um, evaluation functions exposed by the various protocols. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, so this is in the context, let's say real number arithmetic, this is CKKS. Of course, we support the primitive operations such as addition, multiplication, and rotation, just like in any other scheme. What, uh, uh, what I would also uh, maybe highlight there is that we support polynomial of, uh, I mean, anything that can be approximated using polynomials is also supported. So uh, a common technique in the case of CKKS is uh, to take a certain function that, you know, uh, uh, may be hard to be directly evaluated and find an approximation of it, in particular polynomial approximation, and then evaluate a polynomial. So I would say these are, these are probably the four main operations that I, I would mention. Great. Um, and then there's uh, another question. Uh, this is a little more in depth from Alexander. Uh, how do you decide when to do rescaling? 
Um, is it something after each molt or something a little bit more complex? You know, my understanding is that as a case by case basis based on application, but, but please answer Yuri. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something more complex. So it's, it's actually a very good point and good question. Uh, I mean, the general rule, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say it is we do the rescaling right before the next multiplication so that any noise that happens after the initial multiplication uh, oh, I mean, so in other words, let's say additions or key switching operations are basically, uh, I mean, they can can be assimilated in the noise budget created by the multiplication approach. So that's the, uh, from the noise perspective, that's the best uh, approach. But of course we, you know, provide like some alternative techniques, but the typical rule is uh, right before the next multiplication. Um, but of course I would, you know, I, I would rather respond to this question in a, in a more technical way and, and uh, maybe if just we can, we can take it offline and if, if you want to send me an email for instance, I would be happy to give a more detailed answer. Right on. Um, so and then there's a few other questions I'm kind of answering but why don't we continue with the um, uh, presentation Yuri and we'll get back to more Q&A later. Sure, sure. Yep. Okay, uh, so uh, maybe a uh, side note is all important and useful documentation is uh, basically available or linked through uh, the wiki of, of the development repo. And we're gonna go to that uh, repo and we're gonna look at some examples. So it's very important both for beginners and advanced policy users to go basically go, if you have any questions or you're trying to get familiar with the library, go to the wiki and basically from there you will be able to learn how to get started with Palisade if you're a new user or a beginner, or how to do some things that are more advanced, or even how to uh, contribute code to Palisade. Um, so let me uh, bring this up uh, right now, just like I would like to uh, uh, show the wiki. Kurt, uh, you can see my screen, right? The, yes, the, very, the, very clear. Right. Yep, thank so, you. The wiki said. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I was, so I was referring to this Page. So if you click on the wiki on in the uh, development repo, this, this will have the most updated information. And there is a similar wiki in the uh, stable release repo. And uh, this uh, landing page provides basic information about the goals of uh, Palisade, for instance, that it's part of the NAM focus community uh, and gives a certain introduction very similar to what you've seen uh, in both presentations so far. Um, and uh, the specifically interesting part uh, that I would like to highlight here is that we try to put together all the important uh, uh, articles that we wrote for Palisade in a manner that helps, uh, basically speeds up the learning curve when using Palisade. Uh, so the very first question that uh, someone would ask is how do you build Palisade? Uh, and uh, we provide, uh, first high level, I mean, not high level, but uh, OS independent instructions on how to build Palisade. And maybe I'll just very quickly go over that. So first we install system prerequisites, then clone the repo, Palisade repo to your local machine. And then something that should be kept in mind is that uh, we need to download the latest sub module. So for, um, uh, for, so it, for let's say, um, libraries that uh, we use for testing, benchmarking, such as Google Test uh, and uh, Google Benchmark, uh, we keep track of certain commits that uh, need to be downloaded as part of the uh, as part of the basically building process. And uh, this Git submodule uh, synchronization allows us to get the basically right commit downloaded in the local uh, to the local machine. The next step is. Uh, uh, very standard for CMake. So we create a certain uh, directory for the binaries, like uh, build in this case, and we run the CMake configuration. Uh, and uh, afterwards, I mean, if we want to use any external dependencies such as NTL or GMP, uh, we can uh, basically install it here, but in most cases that's not needed as we're interested in the default build. And then the normal Linux way of installing things or the make way of installing things. You can run make and of course with a J flag if you want to do it uh, uh, using multiple um, cores. Um, and if you want to install the library, you run make install. Uh, and, and there are some 
basically additional calls that are very useful, make test all, runs all unit tests. Uh, there's some basic demos that you can run just to confirm also things work for you. So you can look at that demo and there is a make clean to uh, clean the install. So this is a standard procedure for building Palisade, which essentially works the same way in all supported uh, environments, OSs, but of course there might be some differences in how do you install either a certain compiler or certain uh, libraries. So let's look at this example. So we provide instructions for Ubuntu and uh, uh, it's, as we mentioned previously, both uh, uh, GCC and Clang are supported uh, by Palisade. So we provide some instructions, how do you actually install G, uh, G++ or Clang, and depending on which version you want to install in Ubuntu. So this is a little bit auxiliary uh, to the Palisade install itself, but this is just to, uh, uh, for those users who are not familiar with how compilers can be installed, this is, provides basic instructions here and how do you configure one uh, compiler versus the other. And then the rest you can see is just almost copy and paste from the previous document. So everything is, uh, and the, the only difference is, is you know, let's say you want to run docs engine documentation that we use to generate the API documentation for the user, uh, you can run a couple of commands. And also we provide some CentOS specific instructions if, if uh, the user is uh, 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 working with the CentOS flavor. Uh, for, I would say for any other uh, distribution of Linux, very, very similar pattern can be used. Um, then we also provide similar instructions for Windows. And as I mentioned previously, uh, we are focusing on the MinGW version. So in other words, the, the GCC port uh, to Windows uh, that we're, we're focusing on. Uh, and uh, since not everyone may be familiar with MinGW, we explain how to install MinGW and how to install all the uh, basically packages needed for the installation. But as soon as that's done, the rest, all other steps are effectively the same. And uh, yeah, it's, there is no need to even explain them, it's just uh, specific to the OS that's being used. And a very similar logic applies to Mac OS. And in this case, we use the brew, uh, homebrew for installing certain packages and we explain how to do that. So the assumption is that the user may have very limited understanding of how one typically installs a package. We try to include that in our instructions. And as soon as the uh, necessary packages are installed, we go through the standard procedure of uh, uh, getting the submodules and so on. And we even provide special notes here on cross compilation if someone wants, uh, basically, if someone runs into any issues with this very special version of uh, Mac OS, very sp specific version of Mac OS, uh, they can also uh, use some uh, cross compiling uh, uh, flags. So this is as far as the like basic build is concerned. Uh, so as we use CMake, we've also exposed a lot of different options for building um, Palisade. And um, here what I'll focus specifically on various flags that we support uh, in CMake. So for instance, uh, uh, we can, uh, when we write the CMake statement, I mean command, we can specify, do we want to build the unit test or not? And if someone wants just to use it as a library, maybe they, they just want the library itself and, and so want to set a lot of those things to off. Uh, do we want to build examples on or off? Do we want to build benchmarks on or off? Same applies to extras. So everything except for the library itself can be turned off basically with a CMake flag. And we mentioned previously uh, the option of configuring different multi-precision backends um, and uh, Basically, like there are three different flavors. They're called backend two and four and NTL, which is what uh, I referred to in the earlier uh, part of the presentation. We can set those on or off as needed. If someone wants to use NTL or TC malloc, there is a mechanism that provides support for that. So for multi-threading, we typically use OpenMP. By default, it's on, but the user can turn it off if they want to do some of their own a multi-threading using pthreads or some other mechanism. Uh, there is also a flag to uh, use the 
uh, some native machine specific optimizations if needed if for instance uh, the binary will be run on the same machine and we've seen that for instance for clang that can significantly speed up the runtime uh, so by default of course any machine specific um, uh, comp comp uh, compiler optimizations are off uh, so that the binaries will be portable to other systems but if there is a need to get the best speed and uh, and uh, the same machine can be used to build the binaries. We provide this capability with native opt. And then there is a native size that can where you can specify the size of the native uh, integer backend, so let's say 32, 64, or some other option. So I would say these are very important flags to keep in mind. And of course, the rest of this documentation is very useful because it walks through how specifically you do an install with NTL. There is a, uh, a need for that. So then there are also instructions for building C++ projects that use Palisade. They're pretty basic and we provide a uh, CMake example. So I won't go into detail on this. And uh, basically there are a couple of also basic articles uh, in this getting started part. Uh, so what I would like to do uh, next is to highlight that we also provide examples of how to use this scheme or this type of arithmetic over integers uh, or real numbers or Boolean circuits just uh, uh, for the users who do not want to spend a lot of time looking at the manual or you know uh, reading a lot of material they want to just jump directly to an example and start tweaking it we put those simple code examples and uh, and I'll briefly go through each example right now just uh, also to uh, illustrate the uh, API that is used in Palisade so the, uh, and we'll show, we'll also see that the code for BGV and the BFE is exactly the same except for one line, I mean, uh, uh, the main code. Uh, so first we set certain parameters and such as the security level and plain text modules. Then we uh, create, so basically using the so-called uh, crypto context factor or crypto context. So crypto context is the main wrapper for all Palisade code in C++. Uh, and that's the object basically uh, that we typically work with for any crypto operations. And initially we have to set all the parameters and then there is a way to generate this uh, crypto context. In this case, uh, for a specific scheme BFE RNS. And this is the line that will be different from one scheme to the other. The rest, such as encryption, computations will be the same as, as we'll notice. So then we have to uh, then uh, in the crypto context, we also can turn the, on certain high level capabilities, such as are we doing just basic encryption? Are we doing some uh, uh, SHE operations? Let's say, are we doing proxy or encryption? Are we doing multi-party? So uh, a lot of the operations are grouped together into those features. So this can be configured here. Uh, and then uh, we go to the repository of key generation and so key pair equals crypto context key gen. If we need to generate ev evaluation keys like randomization key rotation keys, the same done similar way, crypto context eval mount key gen, uh, generate the randomization key, um, eval at index key gen. So eval at index is, is how we call rotation in uh, Palisade. We can generate uh, keys here and specify the indices that are needed. And uh, then we, Next thing is we specify the actual plain text vectors. So in this case, uh, vectors of integers. Uh, so we have a vector and then we have a certain encoding capability, which again is called through the crypto context, make pack like plain text, for instance. So the plain texts are prepared. Then uh, we encrypt this uh, plain text into ciphertext. And now we go through uh, basic operations. So for instance, uh, two ciphertexts, we want to add them together. We call the so-called eval add operation and we get the ciphertext result. Here we also include some additional computations. So to add three uh, ciphertexts together. Uh, the next example is uh, multiplication. So eval mult and uh, we call it for two ciphertexts. Note that for the more advanced um, uh, users who are familiar with the uh, latest crypto, you know that you have to call, you, I mean, like realization, maybe uh, in BGV also mod switching. All the user has to do is just call the valve mode. That's, that's the only operation that's 
used in most situations unless the user wants to do something more advanced. And then we have uh, homomorphic rotations, which again, the valid index, you can think of it as just rotate by like to the right or to the left. That's what it means. And then we have uh, the decryption operations that basically uh, generate the uh, result of the computation. And then in this example, we, uh, so we do decryptions for various uh, results, uh, encrypted results that we got, and then we output the results. So this example actually runs, and I suggest actually running this particular example first time after you, you build Palisade. So now the next example, so BGV. And the interesting part that what you'll notice is that it's exactly the same uh, uh, sample code, except for essentially this line. The only line that's different between BGV and BFV is how you basically, what crypto context generation uh, tool you run. And the rest is exactly the same way. So all the details, for instance, the details of mod switching uh, and uh, you know, dynamic noise estimation, so on, all those details are completely hidden or avoid, I mean, or those issues are avoided in our implementation of BGV. So this is uh, something uh, to note. And maybe just I'll add one more comment. This uh, optimized uh, full RNS version of BGV uh, first appeared in 110. So currently it's only in the development version. It's not in the stable version, but uh, uh, well, I mean, the stable version will be out in a couple of weeks. So the next example is CKKS. So real number arithmetic. And the high level logic of this computation is going to be very, very similar. So we, we provide a little bit more comments uh, here just to explain uh, different parameters for CKKS because it's, it's uh, quite different from BGV and BFE. So I'll skip those areas. Um, but uh, the main, again, distinction. So we set the security level along with other parameters. Then we have the crypto context generation for CKKS. The rest of the API is the same. So we use actually runtime polymorphism under the hood uh, to achieve this. Um, and uh, basically key generation, a multi key gen. It's a very similar things that we saw in the previous example. The only difference is we're working with real numbers rather than integers. So yeah, there is no need to explain because everything follows the same pattern, same API. Uh, so this should help users also switch between schemes and okay, if I want to do real number arithmetic or if I want to do integer arithmetic. And the last example that I wanna show uh, uh, in this talk is uh, the example for few. Actually, this is particular example is for the TFHE variant of few. Um, and uh, it's the API in this case is slightly different. So there is a, there is a separate context uh, that uh, we create for uh, Boolean circuit evaluation. And we saw that the BNFHE lives in a separate module and we, and we did it intentionally because uh, sometimes there are situations where uh, someone could just use, for example, this particular scheme. Um, I mean, with this particular capability of Boolean circuit evaluation. Uh, but the high level logic is gonna be very similar and it's actually simpler than in the previous cases. So, uh, we uh, basically create a uh, BNFHE context. We're just saying we want to use standard uh, HE standard 128 bit mode. And it's very basic. There are not too many options in this case as compared to the leveled schemes that we looked previously at. Then we do key generation um, just to generate the secret key. Then we generate uh, the bootstrapping key and the switching key. So everything that's needed for bootstrapping essentially. Then uh, we call encryption. In this case, we encrypt bit basically one. That's true. So we do two encryptions. And then afterwards, we have basically we run certain operations. So for instance, uh, eval binary gate, eval bin gate uh, end of two ciphertexts, uh, uh, which internally calls bootstrapping. Or let's say eval not, that's a cheap operation, just negation that uh, doesn't require bootstrapping. And then we do more, some more operations. So uh, we're building on top of the previous results. And, and here we're showing an example of what exactly we're uh, computing on the Boolean side. 
Uh, and uh, so after we are done with this computation, so note that we could have as many operations as uh, needed for a given application. The only constraint here is the actual runtime. Uh, it's not the memory, it's not the storage for, the, uh, for this uh, capability. Um, and uh, the parameters will still be the same uh, that uh, we used, I mean, that we said no matter how uh, uh, large the depth of the circuit is. And then we decrypt the result and we'll look at the results after this. So I, I would suggest if you're a beginner, uh, it's your first time using policy, start with those four examples and then uh, basically make uh, start converting them to something more complex as you get more familiar with policy. So uh, now I would like to very briefly talk about the more advanced documentation that uh, uh, is also accessible from this uh, landing page, the landing wiki page. So the first one is the Palisade user manual. So this is, uh, I would say more manual for software engineers for application developers. It's not a uh, 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 description of the actual latest schemes. Uh, so it's the main focus is how, to, how you use it. And then we update it with every release, with every development or stable release. Um, so I will just go over the table of contents just to give an idea of what you can find in this uh, manual. Uh, the first part is the deals with the library architecture. So more detailed discussion of what I presented previously, how those different layers work. And, and of course we have some introduction, brief overview of latest cryptography, but it's very, very brief. I mean, uh, but library architecture is described in more detail here. We describe the capabilities, like specific operations that are supported for what schemes in the capability section. So much more detailed than what I presented here. Uh, we still include policy directory structure, which you've seen. And then uh, we uh, go over um, basically the different types of uh, uh, objects that classes that uh, we have in Palisade. So we explain those. So the critical one, like the crypto context and, and uh, uh, let's say the BNFHE context. So we explain uh, the, uh, what are the critical classes such as ciphertext, plain text, crypto context, et cetera. So this is the description of the classes. And the rest of the user's guide is deals with some further code samples of like re-encryption or serialization and deserialization. Uh, and uh, so, and in this case, we also provide some example and some information, not just for FHE, but also for attribute based encryption, uh, for digital signatures. Yeah, building and installing policy just refers back to the pages that I already uh, uh, explained. So this is the manual. Uh, we also uh, publish the uh, dynamically generated uh, Doxygen API. I mean, I, I won't go into details, but what I would suggest uh, for someone who wants to become more familiar with what options are exposed is to go to the uh, uh, crypto context impl class, which is the main wrapper that users sees for BGE, BFP, and CKKS, and effectively, in this documentation, I, I don't have time to uh, explain everything in detail, but you can see there are a lot of eval operations that are exposed in Palisade. You can uh, look at what methods are available for operations for serialization. Uh, and then further down in this document, you'll see more detailed explanation. Uh, I mean, of, of what certain operation does, what are the parameters and so on. So, we, and this is, dynamically generated by basically uh, using the Doxygen tool set uh, based on the comments we're putting in the code itself. So this is, so this is, this is probably the place where you can see what exactly, uh, what are the operations that like evaluate index is uh, 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 described here. Um, maybe just I'll open up one more link and then we'll go to the uh, next slide. So Palisade release notes is if you want to track the history of how Palisade has evolved since the very first public release in July of 2017, we update the release notes section here. Uh, yeah, and there are quite a few other uh, articles, maybe one more that I'll just open because I think it might be very interesting for someone who wants to benchmark Palisade. 
Uh, so the benchmarking article explains how benchmarking is done and also provides like one of the some some most important benchmarks that one can run. For instance, this Lee benchmark shows the performance of <coughs> Palisade uh, doing NTT operations uh, just on a commodity machine. It shows the basic operations for BFE RNS for a certain setting, for CKKS for a certain setting, and, and BGV RNS for the three core schemes that are exposed in uh, Palisade. So these are uh, yeah, I would say these are the main articles I would like to pay attention to. Of course, there's a lot of other information like regarding the math backhands, the Gaussian sampling, the publications uh, um, on uh, latest script implementations, known issues, and so on. So for the sake of time, we're not going to go over those. And there is information about how one can contribute to Palisade. And a detailed list of uh, contributors, named list of contributors, is also accessible here. So uh, the, essentially the last slide of my uh, presentation deals with uh, uh, the interactions with the community, with the user community, uh, how to request features or report bugs. Uh, the, we use GitLab again uh, to, uh, and we use the issue tracking capability of GitLab. So the link is provided here. Um, and uh, if you see an issue or even sometimes have a question that you don't understand, but uh, 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 you want to post it, you can use this issue um, uh, tracking capability. If there is a bug that you're running, that you've run into, uh, please include some detail, relatively detailed information like the, what's the console output you're getting with, with the error message? Is it a build error, runtime error, and what's, what's the actual error? Uh, what version or commit of Palisade you've been working with, what environment Palisade was run or built in. Um, and th uh, then after this, we review, the Palisade team reviews the issues and we uh, add some labels, whether it's a minor bug, whether it's a documentation issue or something like that. And uh, then we assign uh, uh, those issues to specific milestones. So milestones typically correspond to either preview releases or stable releases. So we try to group uh, all issues that require implementation changes, code changes into those uh, milestones. So thank you. This is the end of uh, my presentation. So Kurt, uh, we can probably take questions uh, uh, both uh, regarding your previous talk and, and uh, my talk. Yeah, thank you, Yuri. Um... Yeah, so as, as we said before, this was intended to be an overall introduction to uh, Palisade. Um, and uh, like I said, this is the first of a series and very happy to get feedback. Uh, there's been, as we've been going through, there's been some interesting discussion on the chat panel uh, related to the support for various architectures, like I said, like ARM and x86 and things like that. And uh, some, some little more detailed questions about uh, support for niche, niche architectures, which we're very happy to have that conversation. Um, and there's also some questions that have been coming in about uh, evaluation and, and vetting of the library. And uh, it's something that we do particularly uh, uh, take very seriously that we've had, have had several third party evaluations of the library as that's gone through on a, on a project by project basis. And uh, you know the nature of cybersecurity is you can never be too secure, um, and it's something that we're it's a continual battle, as we say. Um, so in terms of other questions, there was a general question about um, uh, if I may paraphrase it that I see related to uh, our, our all arithmetic support and all arithmetic operations supported or, or not with full depth. Uh, I believe that this question might be asking. Uh, do we support fully homomorphic evaluations in addition to somewhat homomorphic? And the short answer is yes. Um, as we discussed before, that we support the native evaluation evaluation operations supported by the uh, the schemes, and those can of course be strung together with uh, uh, through standard circuit evaluation methods, um, and, and even uh, 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 composed with uh, bootstrapping interleaved bootstrapping operations. Um, Erie, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just add a couple of technical remarks. Uh, so for the case of a Boolean circuit evaluation, so few and TFHE, an arbitrary circuit can be supported, so no restrictions there. 
uh, as we saw through that example. Oh, the main limitation is the runtime. Um, for uh, the level schemes such as CKKS, BFP, and BGV, uh, in practice, we typically uh, suggest using the lab leveled approach. So effectively, uh, you specify the multiplicative depth that you need to support. And up to that depth, you can do any basically arbitrary computation, but bounded by that depth. So uh, sometimes this mode is called uh, uh, leveled fully homomorphic encryption. So this mode is uh, also supported. It's just bootstrapping for the three schemes uh, I mean, let's say bootstrapping for BGV and BFP is not very common in practice because of you know certain uh, 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 efficiency challenges associated with it. Great. All right. So I've been answering questions as they've been kind of coming along on the uh, chat window, also in addition to some of the formal Q and A. Um, any other uh, questions from the audience as we go through? And, and um, there's also, uh, like I said, always available to answer in draft by email. Um, you know, there's a general question about uh, what do you see is um, uh, from Ian about uh, what you say is what are the biggest issues at the moment with the design uh, in terms of uh, usability and implementation? And of course, this is always a loaded question. Uh, there are a few things that, of course, we, we're always trying to improve. Uh, performance is always, in, you know, something that we focus on. Uh, we've gotten very interested in support for uh, embedded deployments of, of Palisade. We see this as, you know, particularly embedded in mobile, or something that we're moving on right now. Um, and then, of course, usability is that uh, we have been heavily involved, for example, with the IORPA Hector program to uh, uh, make homework for crypto in general much more usable. And, of course, I know there's been proprietary activities, uh, for example, on the duality side to uh, make sure that make Palisade uh, support uh, uh, general applications for um, uh, use in regulated data environments. Um, Yuri, do you want to, you know, say any other words about, you know, what we see on the horizon for Palisade improvements? Uh, from the more from the usability perspective, or from from depends which which perspective. Yeah, I mean, this is the trouble when you talk with the core development team. There's always a huge list of things we want to do, right? Um, and so, you know, in terms of uh, you know, schemes and things like that. We, you know, what, what kind of schemes do you see kind of on the horizon right now for other things we might want to support mm -hmm. going forward? You know, I have my angle. I'm, I'm rather enamored of attribute-based encryption and the possibilities of that. And I'm sure you have your own opinions also. Yeah, so maybe uh, the first comment I would like to make, I still see room for improvement for uh, the core five schemes that we discussed, the GDBF, the CKS, and yeah, uh, the uh, and PMTFHE. So we are working on those improvements. There will be some in 111. So that uh, there is, uh, I don't think that all options are exhausted, both by the research community and by Palisade at this point. There are still things to do. Uh, it's, and everything is not set in stone yet. Uh, on on top of that, uh, uh, I feel that uh, the certainly the capability of attribute-based encryption is very interesting, just like uh, uh, Kurt mentioned and current specifically key policy attribute-based encryption. We provided in Palisade uh, as only an experimental research feature. It's not part of the main releases. Uh, it, I mean, we would, we, we would like to put more effort in uh, both uh, from the usability perspective and uh, efficiency perspective uh, to include uh, key policy attribute-based encryption in the main release. Uh, I, I think that uh, we'll continue also improving the uh, capabilities related with multi-party computations as well. I see that also as something that's very useful. Um, so that's that's regarding the schemes. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll be uh, basically uh, like improve, we'll be improving and looking at various system level issues just to, making sure that let's say it's all side channel, uh, uh, basically potential side channel attacks can be addressed, uh, you know, circuit drives and things like that. So there's also uh, uh, this uh, aspect of uh, basically hardening from the system perspective of the protocol. So there's a, a theoretical construction. Right, the it's, it's the, yeah. I, I would frame it as the consistent Sisyphean task of a crypto library developer. There's always things to be hardened. You know, you never know what you don't know, and and we value very highly bug reports, other feedback, and one of the reasons that we do do evaluation and have evaluation partners come in regularly 
is to help us to continue to harden the library. Uh, we, we, we have moved very hard to make sure that what we put out is secure, it is as secure as possible. And, um, um, and we do try, you know, one of the reasons we do put out some rapid, rapid improvements to the library are that when we find uh, things that we want to improve um, as we go forward also. And, and you know, this is also to kind of, you know, beat the drum a bit of the question from before. You know, one of the early, early, early uh, motivations for our engagement home over crypto was in mobile, mobile privacy technologies, uh, particularly in the early proceed programs where we were porting over to iOS and Android. And this is something that we continually come back to. And uh, it's, it's on the short list of, of things that I would really like to see going forward uh, also in terms of just more architectures and, and broader support. I think we've answered all questions so far. Yeah, I can see. At least touch on them. Um, we'll yeah. wait 30 more seconds and then uh, get moving along. So as I said, um, this is a, 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 the inaugural uh, episode of what's intended to be a monthly webinar for the indefinite future. Uh, we will be posting a recording of this video and slides up on the Palisade website under the webinar tab. Um, in the next, hopefully, ideally in the next 24 hours. And uh, do please feel free to reach out. You know, one of the nice things of uh, having relatively unusual names like Yuri and I do is they're very easy to find online. So, uh, and of course, our emails are on the website too. Well, it depends when you say unusual, it depends where. <laughs> yeah. My last name is quite usual you know, in another country. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I sympathize with that too. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to uh, end the webinar and thank you everyone for your participation, the conversations and questions. And thank you, Yuri. Thank you.